Rightio, let's do something funky and plastic and fantastic. I'm going to use this material here to make some little Thomas faces, so we're going to need something we want to mould, something funky hopefully, some cotton buds, we're going to need some blue tack, I'm going to use a coloured one because it's going to make the job a bit nicer, and we're also going to need some UV lights, but the sun can help us as well. This toy part duplication process is actually very simple. If you're a younger person, you're going to possibly need an adult to help you along. Best of all, this is a nice, inexpensive, hard and fast way to replicate things in plastic. This product here called Bondic, I was very impressed with this when I played with it at home. It's repaired toys for me. It's like a UV setting plastic in a sense. When I looked at this, there's another YouTuber that I know uh, started looking around for other versions of this product and sure enough, there is one called this. I think most people may know this one. And this one can be picked up online really, really cheaply. But also, in Sydney, this person that I know on YouTube came across this company here. And these people here were fantastic. I actually rocked up at their factory. Naughty boy, I should have bought stuff online. Don't go to the factory like I did because, well, I got a tour of the factory in the end. And I've worked out this stuff here, which is for 3D printers, is excellent for making little faces. I was very curious about this product. Uh, I've played with it and fiddled with it. I don't have a 3D printer, so I'm sort of using this in the most bizarre way. It comes in different colours, but in this video I'm going to use grey. And also I'm using the rapid material here. I think it comes in different speeds. There's also a curious read on here as well. So in essence, this product is really designed for 3D printers, and that's this blah blah about the UV wavelengths that it sets off with. So if I step outside in my red back infested backyard, the best thing is that resin can be set off with the big fella up in the sky there called the sun. It's important to understand how the sun works with this stuff. It can help you and hamper you in this process. You can't do the process I'm going to show you outside in the sun because things happen a little bit too rapid. When I was out at Monocure, which is a factory in Sydney, I also picked up these other coloured resins. From my understanding, Monocure's main customers are people in the USA buying this stuff for 3D printers, which is what it's designed for. But one of these bottles here would make you literally millions and millions of Thomas faces because there's half a litre of product in each bottle. When I first brought the Monocure product home, I was playing around with it, and one of the first things I did, I made like this strange, plasticated, scary face on this Thomas here. A bit like a Slender Man Thomas. It's quite unusual. It's funny, you change a face on something that makes you want to look at it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like, a, it is hard. It's got a plastic face that is bonded to it really well. It's not going to peel off. And then I was thinking to myself, wow, I, I need to start moulding with, with this stuff, but I haven't got a 3D printer. And then I developed a way of making moulds and then pouring this stuff in, in a way so I could make a face, but there's a few do's and don'ts along the way. As I develop this process up, I've stuck with stuff which is everyday, hopefully inexpensive to buy. Of course along the way you have failures. There is a devious diesel, his nose never developed properly. And I did the troublesome trucks of the Ertl style, and I did the um, my metallic Thomas face there. But I built up a way to do this moulding which is hopefully really simple and inexpensive. I'm a huge fan of Bostic Blue Tack. They don't send me any free product. I'm always buying this stuff for myself, but I'm always talking about it on my channel. It is a very, very, well, pale blue. I think that's grey. There is a coloured variation of it. I'm going to use the blue version of it. Not because it's Blue Tack, because blue is going to be a nice contrast for the work that we're doing. And I'm going to set it on something portable, and maybe you'll see why in this video, but I'm just going to place it here. This blue tack has been used a couple of times to make a face now. Maybe it's got a few impurities in there. It's really good to have a good mould because the end result of what you make is only going to be as good as the impression that you get in this stuff here. I'm just going to get a nice smooth surface going there with a screwdriver. The face I'll be replicating in this video is this one here. It's from the all-metal Thomas Wooden Railway powered Thomas. That's a mouthful, wasn't it? I've chosen this Thomas because it's got a nice cheeky cheery face. Some Thomas faces are fairly flat, uh, but this is going to be a nice example for this video. So with a bed of blue tack ready, we're going to make an impression of Thomas's face here, and this is a really, really important part. There's no release agent in this. I have tried with release agent of things on Thomas's face, and what it seems to do is it seems to affect the UV resin. But we'll just sit Thomas's face in there. He's just face planted himself there, going deeper and deeper. Okay, that looks like he's deep enough. So this is important, this part here, that you get a nice high wall on the side here, because that's going to help make our Thomas face. 
And then the trick to getting Thomas out is a matter of just wriggling him around. You've got to try and not disrupt that impression. This is very important. And we're going to very, very carefully wriggle Thomas, taking it nice and easy here, and hopefully he'll come out. Come on, Thomas, play with me. There we are, we've got the impression. So at this point here, you take a nice close look at the impression you've got, looking for little imperfections, because every imperfection in there will be translated to the resin once it starts to set in there. I think for the purpose of this video, that's fine. I'm going to use a 3D rapid grey colour in this video. Most probably most people would use white because then you get a nice white face. I've already shaken this product, I've let the bubble settle out of it and I'm going to very carefully pour some in here but you don't need very much. Okay, that'll do it. So as it stands I'm ready to start making the face. I've got my impression there of the Thomas face, I've got my resin poured, I've got my Q-tip or cotton bud and I've also got my UV light ready to flash. Okay, this first bit is the most important. I'm going to take this uh, very slowly because what I learned was if you put too much of this resin in here on this first layer, this is where the trouble starts. So what I'm doing here is I'm just very carefully layering in some of that resin there. And, you know, I keep saying the first layer is the most important because any imperfections that kick off here uh, will be there at the end on the face. So... That could be looking okay there. I've got my little UV light here and I'm just going to flash it off. Okay. And it's just a process of going layer up a layer. I'm not sure whether I'll show you all the layers, but I'm certainly going to show you the first few here. Because it's the most important to understand. Okay, going in for another layer here. It's just step by step. In a sense, I've become a 3D printer. There's my future in life, eh? I think the robots will take over the world, won't they? What will we do in the future when the robots are everywhere? Okay, coming in for UV light again. Maybe we need to be the people making robots. Or do they say the robots make the robots, don't they? Okay, it doesn't take much to set this off. What I've found is that the workshop lights that I've got here, and they are LED lights. I transferred the LED lights about a year back. And I noticed they seem to be, well, very sluggish in setting this resin off, so maybe that's working for me. Okay, I've been a bit rushed here because I'm trying to show you this as fast as I possibly can. I can't talk forever. Or maybe I can. Okay, another layer. So you're starting to get a feel for it. And really it was that first layer is the most important, I can tell you, because any mistakes in that first layer... Are there to be seen on the face when we pull it out of the mold? Now, the other part which is very curious in this, I have tried various mold release agents, and what I found was that the resin, this 3D resin, didn't like to play with those. So, when we come to pull this out, you're probably thinking, oh, but Leo, it's going to get stuck to the blue tack. Well, something miraculous happens when we go to pull this out. Now, what I could be doing between layers, I could actually just take it outside in the sun, and the sun sets it off. You better believe me on that. I'm just uh, doing it inside here at the moment. And remember, you can't do this job outside because your little tray of this resin here will just flash off. And it gets very hot when it goes off, so you've got to be careful with this stuff. It's a very, very funky thing. If you ever go to the dentist, they now use this stuff, this, this curing stuff, to stick teeth in and stuff. I'll put the, the best thing is go and read the wiki page on these photo curing polymers and whatever else because i know nothing if i start talking like i know what i'm talking about well that's when you've got to be really careful but you can see me going layer up a layer here it's actually a quite a nice little process to do maybe i'll speed up the video from here on as we build this up what do you think hey eh? maybe i can tell you a story i have the sped up footage when i went to the factory there and the gentleman who ran the factory or owns the factory I mean, I walk in there like I'm the golden goose. Who's this guy who's walked in, doesn't know who he's talking about? And I'm frightened to say to people, oh, I'm, I'm here to use your product to make Thomas faces because <laughs> people just write you off immediately. <laughs> and look, the factory manager in the end, before I meet anyone, I do a bit of research about them and I noticed on his LinkedIn account, he used to work for a TV network. So I knew his background. And because I work in the film industry, well, I could connect to him in a little bit of a different way. And in the end, he gave me a fantastic tour of his factory. I, I met the, the scientists in the lab, saw their lab. The lab was all red light. And I think they do that so the resin doesn't get set off. It was a very, very interesting visit. And uh, I said to him, look, 
uh, I'll be showing your product in a video, but don't expect it to be coming out of a 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> this this is how I'm showing his product. But his main customers are people in the USA. So that's a very curious thing to do. And his product is extremely well priced. And also it's a very good product from what I've heard from the people who do 3D printing. And maybe you know this product. Maybe you're over there in the USA. The bulk of my audience are uh, in the USA. Maybe you know about this product, hey? Please let me know. Rightio, after working layer up a layer, and that first layer is the most important. I keep saying it, I'm going to move my resin here, which hasn't gone off under the workshop lights, which is strange, isn't it? I've got it on my mobile bit of card, and I'm going to go and put it out in the sun. Yes, it's a beautiful sunny day, and I could have gone layer up a layer by just running outside into the sun. You don't need that little UV light. Okay, let it sit there for a while. I just hope Fluffy Cat doesn't eat it. I'll try and show you how this product smokes as it sets off with the UV light there. If you look carefully, look at that there, smoking as it sets. So be a bit careful playing with this stuff. And just for fun, I've got some of the white resin here. And I'll try and do a slender face Thomas here, slender man Thomas with this Thomas wooden railway Thomas here. I'm trying to remember how I, I was just mucking around. It's funny, you muck around with things. And then the strange things happen. Now, one of the things that I learned with this stuff is if you try and set off too much of this stuff, you get strange bubbles and stuff. So it's a bit of a layer up a layer thing. Okay, set that first layer off. Okay, I'm just getting ready for the next lot. Oh, it's changing already. Yes. Maybe you're going to like doing this. Maybe you're going to hate it. It's uh, really your choice. But I just think it's sometimes fun to play around with things and just see how things work. Remember, this is the white resin I'm using here. I've been a bit rushed here because, well, try not to waste your time. And uh, maybe one of those things, less is more. I might give it one more splash, eh? Although it looks like it might be there. Maybe just a bit more down around here. Okay, I think. Once we set that off, that's going to do it. Spooky. Okay, I think that's done. Let's take a bit of a look at this. And I'm pretty sure that pen would have set that stuff off okay. Yes, it's not coming off. It's all set. And we've got our very, very spooky looking Slender Man Wooden Thomas. And it might sit nicely next to my other one there. Might be time to come out and get the one from outside. As I thought, look at that fluffy cat there. Mrs. Inquisitive, I hope you haven't destroyed my work here, Fluff. What is it about cats? I always go for something brand spanking new. Anyway, it wasn't out in the sun for that long. It's time to take it out of the mould. First thing I'll do is I'll pull this blue tack from the card here. Don't leave it in the sun for too long or else I think this stuff does get a bit too wild. But it's going to be crazy when you see the way this comes out. Because I've done this a couple of times now and I think I've got a disaster on hands and it turns good. And now it's just a process of peeling this stuff away, and we're going to use the blue tack to also tack away stuff that's stuck to the mould. Now remember, I didn't use a release agent, which you're probably thinking, that's crazy, Leo, we've never heard anything like this. Most time when you're moulding things with all those very expensive moulding agents, and you know the ones I'm talking about, I'm not going to name brand names there, but uh, you tend to put release agents and whatnot on there, waxes and stuff. And we're getting there, okay. And you're probably thinking, this is a... This is a disaster, Leo. Where's the face? Well, believe me, the magic is going to start to happen. And I'm not cutting the camera on this. You need to see the magic happen before your eyes. As each eye of Thomas here starts to be revealed. Okay, and I'll just get rid of the bulk of that there. I've used this blue tack over a couple of times. I think you've got to get, well, you'll start to see bits and bobs get caught up in the blue tack and then you start to get a nice fresh one. Okay, now I'm using the blue tack here to get rid of the, the blue tack on the face here. And you're probably thinking, that was a strange Thomas to choose, Leo, but I chose it because it's got a nice uh, a nice face look at it. Now, there we are. I'm just taking off the last bits of tack here. Still some caught in the eye there. Okay, there we go. There is the Thomas face, and it looks pretty darn awesome, if you ask me. So there's the Thomas that I replicated the face of. You're thinking, that's a strange Thomas to do. I did it because it's a nice featured face. There is the face there. It is a nice hard plastic. You can get a file under this. 
you can tidy it up. I think on the website it read that this stuff is like the plastic that you'll find in hard hats. I hope I'm correct there. If I'm wrong, well, I'm always wrong, aren't I? But what's nice about this is it's nice and tough. You can come along and paint it, finish it up with a file, do what you want. There's a nice, easy way to make a nice plastic Thomas face. Well, I was curious to try and get a devious diesel face out from that toy there, and I've done that with the blue tech again, disposable mold, and I used the black resin this time. So let's see if I can pull this out. I suppose you can go and get your normal stuff that you do this sort of thing with. Easy Cast is one. I think an older brand was called Fast Cast. Uh, but what is expensive in this process is buying the stuff that makes the mold. I'm just using blue tack and I think that's probably the most novel aspect to this. But I've got to try and get Devious Diesel out here without snapping his nose off and I've got to be a little bit careful at the moment. Come on Diesel, where are you? And this process is just a really hard and fast way to replicate something. I mean, that's the essence of this. I know some people will say, oh, but Leo, you're crazy because you're using a 3D printer product in a way that it shouldn't be used, but I'm just trying to use it in a, no a novel fashion. I'm just being very careful here around the nose still. We're getting there. Little bit by little bit, maybe just pull it away and I'll start playing D-Tack time. And what I've learned here is if you just get some blue tack and it'll basically tack to itself and pull it off. There's a nice way to do this. Oh yes, maybe. Just maybe we have success here. It seems to get caught up around the eye detailing as well. Okay, we're very close. Just getting those final bits away from Devious Diesel's face there. There is my black resin Devious Diesel. Look at the detailing in that there. That was the blue tack that was used over a number of moulds. I think maybe it's nice to have fresh blue tack. And the face that was pulled from was that toy there. It's very interesting when you see it flip around to the other colour, isn't it? Is it giving you ideas? Hmm, imagine that stuck there, eh? Ooh, yeah. Can you hear that in the background? Welcome to my extremely unquiet neighbourhood. I am hounded by sounds all the time. Right here, let's do a real quickie because I know you're going to ask, Leo, why didn't you show us hot milk glue to make a face? Uh, it comes in a variety of blah blahs. I've spoken about this in another video. There's actually a glow in the dark hot milk glue. That would be fantastic. I'm just warming up the glue gun there. I've done a couple of experiments and learned what I can and can't do. And one thing I've learned I need to do on this one is use a style of release agent. And I'm just going to use silicon spray because I'm trying to get stuff that everyone can grab hold of. And that's enough. That may have been a little bit overboard, but hey, at least the glue will release. Just before I put the hot milk glue in, I'm just going to make sure there's no pools of silicon spray in there. Okay. Okay, this is one of these things that just really hit and miss. The nose is really important to get first. I've had an air bubble, then it's a case of just getting that glue in there and trying to not apply air bubbles to everything that goes in there. Okay, I'm going to start really getting in there now. Okay, and then what I do is actually take it up to a freezer. The freezer is in the freezer above your fridge inside your house to uh, make sure the glue is totally off. Okay, that's it. Here's our freezer. There's a little fridge magnet I did from another failed thing that I was trying recently. Open her up. Carefully get our hot milk glue, blue tack, blah, blah. Okay, in there, not for too long, just until the glue's set. Obviously, I'm back down in the garage and I'll get this hot milk glue, blah blah, which is now a bit cool because it's been in the freezer there. Out of the mold, remember there was a silicon spray put on this and that'll make it a lot easier to pull out. Okay, here comes Thomas's face. I wonder how he did. That hmm. actually doesn't look too bad. It's probably one of the better of the hot milk glue ones that I've done. Maybe a bit missing from the nose there. It was a rush job. You can see there was a bit of an air bubble there on the nose. But hey, for something very cheap and cheerful, it's not too bad. Now, the thing I don't like about hot milk glue is, well, number one, it's a glue. It's flexible. It is a little bit hard to apply paint to because it's got a peculiar nature. To tidy this up, I'd have to come in and, and use a knife and things. And the thing that I've found is if you go to file hot milk glue... It's actually a peculiar substance because it tends to want to bounce off everything. 
Hot milk glue, yes, you can make a little Thomas face, but you've restricted. But if you start making it with this nice plasticky sort of stuff, that's the monocure face there. You've got a lot of scope for adventures. So there's my hot milk glue faces, the black ones there. This is my monocure faces here, the grey ones there. And what I've done is I've made one out of the professional stuff or the standard stuff. It's called Replicast, that stuff there. It sets off in 90 seconds. You've got to be really organised when you use this sort of stuff. Another one's called Easy Cast. There's all different variations of this. Uh, sometimes to set up a mould, you'd use a silicon product like this instead of using Blue Tack. And so often when you're dealing with these products here, you're using a professional release agent. That's called J-Wax. It's an aerosol product. It's actually really handy to have. And I've got a little cast down here, which has all been set off now, and hopefully it can come out, and I'm going to give this a go. And strangely, I've used a Blue Tack mould here, because I'm being a cheapskate up. Like, remember, this is all hard and fast. And I'm going to get this out, and there was a release agent used in this. It was actually J-Wax, and we'll see how this face comes out. And this would be like, I think most uh, normal people would maybe pull off a face like this. Okay, well, let me clean it up, and we'll take a look. And like the uh, monocure stuff, I'm just using the blue tack to basically pull it away from the face there. Yeah, it's cleaning up nicely. So there's three Thomas faces made in three very different ways using three very different materials. There's always blue tack as the mould. And if I look at the Replicast one, which is the last one here, you never saw me mix the product. It's just a 50-50 product mix. It's picked up every little bit of detail or blemish which was in that mould, okay, so it really needs an excellent mould to pull it off if you start using gear like this. Well, this video has been a bit of a do-it-yourself Thomas Face adventure, hasn't it? Uh, what I should say, and I should have said this up at the start of the video, is, and most importantly, I've got no commercial connection or payback from Monocure, neither from Blue Tack. The Thomas people never speak to me, so I don't need to mention them. People who make glue sticks, people who make products like this, 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 or this. So there are three replicated Thomas faces using three very different products. But there's actually one thing that is very common amongst these products you have to be a bit careful of. Whenever you're going to buy stuff or use replicas for one of them, you've got to buy it in as big a bottle as possible and get as close to the source company as possible. You start buying stuff in small amounts, it starts really ranking up the price. The same applies to glue sticks. Man, the price of this stuff here can be really volatile, especially if you're going for the exotic glue sticks, and the glow-in-the-dark ones are the same. Anything which is like normal is okay, but who wants to play with normal? But what's nice about Monocure is it is actually the source company, and what I have read online and what people do is they go and buy the bigger bottles of this stuff, they go and decant it into smaller bottles, and they make some pretty easy dough. When I learned the method using the Monocure product, what's really important is not to use too much and rush the process. The whole process for me to make a face, even though it got sped up in the video, is about 15 minutes. It's actually not too bad in time, and you just got to take your time, layer up a layer up a layer to build the face up. Now you're probably saying, Leo, what would happen if you tried to do it as one pour and take it out of the sun? Well, this is the disaster that, ha that happens. And of course I had to learn by my mistakes, and there's all air bubbles and everything in there, and if I turn this over, it's a Thomas disaster, I don't even know if you can tell what's going on there. Maybe you can, but the stuff tends to blister and bubble, and maybe it's best shown if I show you the little cup here of the stuff that I got. Of course, this is the blue resin, and if I get this out, when it's in larger quantities, you can see the air bubbles that can get into the product, and that's what you don't want to have happen. It's often weird what triggers videos. I try to make them interesting as possible. If you learn something along the way in my processes, maybe it gives you ideas to bend it your way. You don't have to do exactly as I do. Maybe you can say, well, Leo, I can use that and that, and I can make something better than you. Hey, that's fine by me. It really goes back to the Bondic product, and I spoke to the YouTuber Mescal, and he said, hey, Leo, you know, there's actually a company in Sydney that makes these 3D printer resins for UV printers, and I didn't even know about these printers. You see, Mescal's into 3D printers. He's got videos up on his YouTube channel all about this. I'm yet to buy a 3D printer, but I bought the resin. I thought, well, how can I bend the resin to be something that I can make useful? I knew about EasyCast and ReplicaCast and all the ways to replicate stuff. And I thought, wow, I can see a product here which seems to be very similar to these other products that I'm familiar with. I'm going to make it work. And hopefully in this video, I've demonstrated that for you. Just something weird, something funky and something that hopefully nobody else has done.
You're probably thinking, you're crazy, Leo. I'll just go and buy a 3D printer and do exactly the same thing. Well, I think my process is a bit faster than those funky 3D printers.